And since he made us in his image, I believe that to a great extent the creativity we possess is because the Creator put it there. God put things in us to his tool developers and creative individuals, and I think it has to please him when he sees us use those faculties to make something completely new. What do I add as a human being? What does God's image in me generate that is representative of him? And I think that can be done in any skill. And therefore, I think when we use these skills, it can't help but give him pleasure, and hence we feel that pleasure in us. You're using what I built in you. You're unique. Uh, or there's something special about each one of us that we ought to try and cultivate and ask God, what is this unique part of me that I ought to really make work for you? And when we do that, it has to, I think, improve our relationship because he's seeing in us respond to what he built in us. And therefore, my perception is, I should compete in the open market because that's the best taste, uh, test of my faith. If, if my faith is really what I say it is, then it should be able to excel in fields that those who don't have that faith play in. Um, and I think as Christians, we need to take our gifts and put them forth in a world which sees excellence from us. You can be a Christian pilot. You can be a Christian um, garbage collector, you can do any of those sorts of things because it's the salt and light you carry with you that's the point, not what you do. Okay? And therefore, the real credit doesn't go to me. It goes to him who created me. It's very hard for the water pot to say, look how well I pour and not give credit to the potter. <laughs> Many times if I'm having trouble with an idea, trying to understand something, I'll ask God, can you help me with this? I'm trying to understand. And it's not like he cheats for you. It's like when you encourage a child to learn something, you want to bring it out of them. You want them to discover it, but you guide them. And so I kind of feel I ask God to guide me, help me discover what's there. And sometimes some of the greatest ideas are the simplest. Probably the most, the, the best one in my life was when I was trying to create the laser printer. And it has a little spinning mirror in it, and it had to be extremely precise. And the question was, how will this ever be producible when it's got to have the, the, such a tiny angular error in the mirrors. And I sat down and thought about that and went back to first principles in optics since I was an optics guy and looked at something and then said, well, that's interesting. That would work if it was that way. Then it dawned on me this was something called a cylinder lens. So I drew it out and said, this looks like this would work. And then I thought, no, that's way too simple. Nothing that simple could solve this problem. Will it solve the problem? It cracked the rock, okay? And it was the closest to having a eureka moment I've ever had in my life. One of the questions I raise to people is, would you rather have a, dis a desk which is 18 inches square, or would you rather have a display that's 30 by 40 inches, like your desk? Well, the answer, of course, is, well, of course I would like a... Uh, a bigger display. So I set about to create one and people yeah. immediately look at it and say, oh, that's wonderful. But on its own, they wouldn't necessarily have conceived of it. So I see my role as taking an idea and turning it into a handleable reality so that they can begin to appreciate what we might do. And that's what this is. This is a large widescreen display that wraps around you. Uh, let me bring up something that you that might be interesting here. Um, so here, for example, is an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, let's put a, some numbers on here, but what you will want to see when I do this is I can now stretch this spreadsheet over the whole screen. So now I have the ability to put large pieces of information up here, or if I don't want that, then I can put it over here. And something else I can do which we'll find interesting, is we will put up a picture. So let's take, this is a particularly nice one here. So here is a window with a picture on it. And I can now increase that picture to fill the screen. So you can now use it for putting large photos on. And what we have found is, from our tests, that we're seeing significant improvements in people's ability to get work done. And therefore, it becomes a more pleasant environment and one in which people accomplish more with less effort. And therefore, it's a more pleasant experience to work on. 
my logic was, well, of course, God built us with peripheral vision. Why would he not want us to use it? So this is an attempt to engage what I've already been designed with. Rules. While Einstein wasn't a Christian, he said something very profound once. He said, science is the game we play with God to find out what his rules are. And to me, this is uh, the sort of thing I feel here. And I see how the great precision with which the universe is assembled. Some of the things had to be accurate within 15 decimal places in order for the world to work the way it does. By chance? Oh, come on. So often if I write papers, and I've done this a lot recently, I'll tell them, for example, when we're doing a display, that the human being was designed with this capability and see if they catch it rather than the human being evolved to have peripheral vision. The human being was designed with color and peripheral vision capabilities. And I know some of them look at it a little bit and they don't know whether to ask a question or not, but that's what I put it in there for. Read it.